Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry. Really? That's what we're going with? Everybody, welcome to That Gets My Goat on the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. Hey, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. I can't believe we're doing this again. I thought we had buried That Gets My... Oh, no, we just recorded so many episodes... We thought we would never have to record again. Yeah, we figured we, we were done. Turns out there were movies after Batman. I didn't see any. <laughs> Me neither. I thought today we could do a... Uh, a, a we're we're going to bring it down a little bit. We're going to bring the room down here. Uh, no, I just thought it would be fun to go ahead and do an old school style that gets my goat. This one is going all the way back to the origins because I, I wanted to talk about something that gets my goat. This will do. be an episode of That Gets My Goat Classic. I don't think I've talked about this on That Gets My Goat before. If I have, then stop me, Rish, because that would be really dumb to start getting my goat about something and then realize we already did that episode 40 episodes ago or something. But I don't know if, if anybody else sees this around, but uh, you know that classic ad campaign for milk where this person has something there they're eating the cake and it's it's really moist and and then somebody's like oh no we're out of milk and everybody's face is like oh no and then god milk comes up and you know that used to be that was probably one of the four or five biggest ad campaigns of the last 20 years right it was really clever back when it was new but when would you say it was new I parodied it in uh, 1998, and even then I was just like, oh, I hope nobody notices how old this joke is. You know, that's funny because I also, I don't know if you'd call it a parody of a Got Milk. I just did a Got Milk commercial for a project in film school in probably 1998. Yeah, it was the same kind of thing. It was just like, I hope people don't think this is old and tired, and they, it, it had been done so much already and we looked it up here and the first got milk ad was in 1993 so here we are in 2012 oh don't make us feel old that's 20 years later which is yes just short of 20 years later from the origin of the got milk commercial and i don't know if if it's like this for other people or if where we live is different but I would say I see a different Got Milk parody probably once a day on somebody's bumper sticker, somebody's small business. A billboard. A billboard. That's where I always see Or it. worse yet, one of those little tiny papers that somebody like gets a couple of wires and they stick it into the ground like right off the side and it says like, Got pests? Call this exterminator. I think we call that littering. <laughs> It's like the worst, it's the, it's the thing that just needs to be put to rest, basically. Every time I see that, I see the got this, and I'm like, uh, got creativity? Apparently not. It's the tiredest, oldest thing that just needs to go away. I mean, it was great when it first came out, and there were funny commercials and really enjoyable ones, ones that I loved. But it ran its course. They don't. They haven't been using Got Milk for like 10 years. It moved on to other things and people are still... It's like maybe he likes it Hey Mikey was st <laughs> still being parodied years after they gave up on it. But I don't think so. But, but the, what bothers me, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, is that they don't try and be creative with it. Got Pests. How stupid would you have to be to think that that was amusing? I mean, I'm serious. You'd have to have the mental equivalence of a one-year-old or somebody that was in, you know, some kind of vegetative state, <laughs> incapable of doing anything but imbibing fluids and shitting. That's how stupid you would have to be to say, wow, that's clever. Yeah, there's no cleverness to it. It's just like the laziest. Maybe other people would disagree with me, but I would be really less inclined to call the number that goes along with that slogan than anything else because it's the laziest ad idea ever it's been done a hundred million times it's just like dude really this sucks it's the laziest ad idea you want me to hire an exterminator that has a lazy idea 
do I want a lazy exterminator to come to my house and just sit around and be like, hey, I'm going to sit on the couch here for a while. Oh, you guys are watching Wizards of Waverly Place. I love that. Oh, let me just, oh, you got some brewskis in the fridge. Good. Can I have one? You know, that's what you expect you're going to get from somebody who would use that as their slogan still 20 years after it's dead. But they're not using it in an ironic way. No. They're not switching it up. No. They're not trying to be funny or anything like that. They're just sticking their product in that sentence, imagining that there are idiots out there <laughs> that will actually say, oh, that's clever. Oh, that's clever because instead of got milk, it says got <laughs> cement mixer. Oh, that's delightful. No, there's. I don't care how old you are. If Betty White's grandmother were still alive, she would not find that amusing. Yeah, it just frustrates me. And I just wish and I know that the sad thing is nobody listens to the show. So they're not going to hear this and go, whoa, maybe I should change my slogan up. But <laughs> I wish there was some way where I could just get it out there. Hey, everybody, stop using this. It's not funny. It's not good. It's tired and old. The last time I heard that, I fell off my dinosaur laughing. It's just <laughs> terrible. It's so old and tired. Please put it to, you know, let it stay in the grave where it was put 10 years ago when the milk company finally stopped using it. Just let it go. But see, that original Aaron Burr commercial got milk. I guess it was the punchline. But it was more just a, a super creative environment. It was... Oh my gosh, it was the aristocrats where it was this super creative setup to a punchline that meant nothing. And how they did the whole setup was what made those commercials funny. Then when it went got milk, well, you're just like, okay, well, yeah, all oh, right. Now yeah. that's our cue to clap. But all the stuff up to be, and you know what? I'm giving it too much credit because even then it wasn't, because later it was just, they would show a celebrity that had white goo on their upper lip, and it would say, got milk. That's, I think that's separate, the milk mustache deal. Well, it says it there, that it's the same dang thing. Is it? I think they may still do the mustache thing. But I, you know, I'm thinking that, like, got milk is trademarked because the word milk can't be. You know, that the project is now called Got Milk <laughs> because it's one of those things where we have to be able to market this. We have to be able to own this. We have to be able to sue you guys for using it, which I would welcome. Sue anybody who still says got. Yes, please. Suppositories. You know, it just... It, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way it's become. Although if you saw somebody s sitting uncomfortably with like this pinched up look on their face and it said got suppositories at the bottom, <laughs> see, then it's a punchline again. And nobody would ever be that creative as I just right. was. But it just, oh, uh, I don't know. I don't hate it as much as you do. But when I see it, and I would see it on billboards. So I was thinking somebody's paying thousands of dollars a month to show this image and piss me off every single day. <laughs> and that's something that's probably, it's a whole other episode of that gets my goat. But people in advertising are so, so lazy. I it just more lazy than I am. And I, oh, I should get a doctorate. In fact, I earned a doctorate in laziness, but I didn't bother to go pick it up. Yeah, it's too much work. The radio commercials are the worst of them all. Uh. And they don't try, I mean, it's like one of those Saturday Night Live sketches that caused you to stop watching the show, <laughs> where it's the same sketch again and again and again, but they've just changed out who the host is in that sketch or changed out the location in which the sketch happens. <clears throat> but it's almost word for word the same sketch, which I hate, dude. I mean, you've got like the longest running variety show in television history or something like that. And this is what you're, I mean, this should be the top of the food chain of like aspiring comedians is like the best of the best of the best appear on Saturday Night Live and the greatest writers who are going to go on to write the comedies that make $200 million for the next 20 years should be the writer's names that you should watch an episode from 10 years ago of Saturday Night Live and recognize every single name on there. But instead you get this cardboard cutout bullcrap man where it's just all set up around catchphrases and stuff that the audience already knows exactly what's going to happen and what's going to happen after that and what's going to happen after that and they, and they don't bother to switch it up f those guys and i love saturday night live it just hurts <laughs> me to see crap like that uh-huh anyhow with like the radio ads 
they're so, so unprofessionally done. They're so terrible. And for an hour sitting down, I could write a whole year's worth of radio ads for whatever their product is that would be better than what they've got going week after week after week. And I, I remember in LA, which is probably the number two market in America for advertising, right? They would have these terrible mattress commercials. They were so obnoxious and so annoying that you'd just go, ah, oh, when you'd hear them on the radio or see the TV version. It was one of those, you almost never see them anymore. When I was a kid, there would be like live television commercials from like local businesses and all that stuff. But that's how cheap these LA, Los Angeles, number one television market in the world, or in America at least, would do these commercials that were that cheap. And then they would always end with this terrible slogan which was you're killing me larry and it was this mattress place and it was a chain and everybody knew about him and and and, and the commercials were on the radio on every single channel and the the spanish channels would have their mexican version of the guy doing these lines and all that and when i got my own apartment and was buying a, a bed i went to this place and i said you know i almost didn't i almost didn't come in because your commercials And they're like, yeah, they're terrible, huh? And the guy was proud of it. And he's like, (laughs) our commercials are so bad, but everybody knows us and everybody knows our slogan. And everybody that comes in here has heard those commercials. And they always, whether they remark that they hate them or whether they remark that that doesn't bother them, they all come in here. He was proud of it because it had accomplished their goal. And I purposely did not buy the mattress from this place because, because they of, of well, it was they were. it was mostly because of the attitude of this guy. He was a jag off dude. <laughs> he was one of those guys that you know a perfect Hollywood suit kind of guy who you know would call you sweetheart or one of those stupid baby uh, you know words to pretend that you had some kind of relationship because he wanted something from. Whenever you see the execs that are just like, oh, big fan, yeah, oh, oh thanks a lot for sitting, and they're just so smarmy and disingenuous or whatever. That's what this guy was. Yeah, and I walked out of there and ended up getting my mattress someplace else. But th- there would be people that would intentional that would realize that they had bad commercials and they would capitalize on that. Is probably second only to the Holocaust. <laughs> in the crimes yeah (laughs) Yeah, you know it's funny there's when we were in college there was a computer guy that would do that his commercials were absolutely hideously bad a local guy yeah he like made his name that way and he got people into his uh, store by being annoying and terrible so i I guess there's a way for it i remember See, I missed most of that. I didn't know. But I I got here at the tail end. The guy went crazy. He did, yeah. And he ended up losing his business because of it? Yeah, he he did a lot of stupid things and his business was eventually people stopped going to it. Not because his commercials were terrible, which is when they should have not gone to it. But later when he became kind of a wacko and was on the news for reasons other than his business was doing a good profit or anything like that. Um, But yeah, he had lost his mind. And I remember seeing interviews with him and you were just, it was like seeing interviews with Manson, only a less creepy Manson, like a silly, stupid Manson. <laughs> right. But you could tell that there was something broken inside his brain. But is it that people found it endearing how bad the commercials were? Or was it this manic, crazy intensity? People just assumed that was a character. I don't know. I could never understand it, how it would be that anyone would go to something like that. That would drive me off. But apparently, sometimes that works. I don't know. And he was chopping up and eating school children. Or what was it that ultimately, <laughs> what they discovered? <laughs> they, they, they discovered like an entire suitcase filled with foreskins or something like oh, that, God. that he had been hoarding, collecting oh, wow. from... Only you, Rich Outfield, <laughs> only you. But uh, yeah, so in summation, don't use got milk. Don't parody got milk. Don't. Oh, see, I derailed the conversation in talking about that. No, that was but, part but of it, But it's indicative of the laziness of, and, and see, I don't understand that. You see Mad Men, which I'm not a fan of, but you see that sort of thing, or you see how to succeed in business without really trying, or, you know, something from those golden days of advertising or whatever. And there was just this manic intensity of of creativity, of, of brilliance, of, of, oh, what are we going to do to draw in attention? And uh, what was the... 
There was a movie where there were the two big stores in New York and they had their windows and they were competing window after, you know, trying to get the attention of the customers. Oh, was it Mannequin? Was it? <laughs> okay. Sing me the theme of Mannequin. One, two, three, go. Oh, shoot. It's that uh, Jefferson Starship or Starship song after they were Jefferson. After George Jefferson had his own spinoff, yes. We See? could be us ever, 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 ever together. Nothing's gonna stop us now. Ding, 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 ding. That's Sorry. right, for $50. Or, I guess, in, with inflation. $184,000. <laughs> I, I see that and I'm inspired by it. The the way that advertising used to be. Uh-huh. You know, it's like, we've got the best. Oh, you know, we've tried it on focus groups and they all ejaculated. Amazing. And, you know, including the women and children. You're just like, wow, we're going to sell a million of these hula hoops or whatever. You know, Hudsucker Proxy, that kind uh-huh. of thing. Now, I just, I think about a whole bunch of suits saying, you know, that we hired a trio of 14 year olds to write our copy and i i don't know because even 14 year olds would want to prove something and they would want to seem cool and it seems like whoever writes these commercials i guess they are one of the suits yeah one of those people that only thinks about money and has not any creative juices or any aspirations to do anything except for collect more dollar signs (laughs) yeah that's pretty much all i had to say about that though okay well that's that's fine to be continued next time today's show sucked more than usual not more than usual that gets my go is produced under creative commons attribution non-commercial no derivatives license sad but true 95 1993 encouraging the consumption of cow's milk how old are we that we have to talk about these ancient things these ancient concepts that no longer apply